welcome. In this session in linear data analysis, we'll explore two matrix norms. The first is called the L2 norm. And this is the norm that is the default in many computational packages such as MATLAB. And the definition of this norm is that for any matrix that has all real entries with m rows and n columns and any vector that has all real entries and n rows, the matrix norm, and here we're going to indicate that it's the L2 norm by putting a subscript of 2. This is defined as, so this is defined as the result of an optimization problem. Strictly speaking, I should be using the supremum, but I'll use the max function because that's more familiar to most of you in my audience. So this is defined as the maximum over all of these vectors that have n entries that are not equal to the zero. And it's defined as if we take the matrix and we transform that w vector with it, that that vector norm divided by the norm of that vector is as large as possible. And how do we find this? Well, the way that we usually do this is let's ab introduce an abbreviation. So let's abbreviate um, the largest eigenvalue of an art of a matrix argument as let's say that's lambda sub max and we can use many many ways to find the largest eigenvalue then one way that we can quickly measure the L2 norm of a matrix, so if we have a matrix and we want to find the L2 norm, that is we take A transpose A, so now that's going to be a square matrix, and if we find the largest eigenvalue, then the L2 norm of that matrix is the square root of the largest eigenvalue of A transpose A. A second one is a more natural extension of the uh, Euclidean norm from vectors. So let's recall the vector Euclidean norm. And that vector Euclidean norm is the square is the root of the sum of the squares. So the definition of the Frobenius norm Frobenius norm is that it's an extension of this idea. So the definition is that for any matrix that has all real entries with m rows and n columns, if we take the matrix and we want to find the Frobenius norm of that matrix, it equals the square root. So for a vector norm, we would say the vector Euclidean norm was the square root of the sum of the squares. And we'll do the same thing for the Frobenius norm. So we'll, we'll say that that is the sum as i goes from 1 to m, so the sum over all rows, of the sum over all columns of entry ij of the matrix squared. Another way to write this is to say that the square of the Frobenius norm is just the sum over all i sum over j of a i j squared. So this is, sometimes people will define this as the Frobenius norm, sometimes they'll define it as the square of the Frobenius norm. It's the same. So it turns out that there are some important relations between 
the no these two norms, and the singular value to composition. If we think of A transpose A, in previous sessions, we use that to derive part of the singular value to composition. And we discovered that the largest eigenvalue of A transpose A was the same as the largest eigenvalue of A A transpose, and that was the, the square root of that was the singular value. So we can also say that the L2 norm of a matrix is the first singular value of the matrix. And for the Frobenius norm, it will turn out that if we take, if we take every entry of the matrix, square it and add it up, that that equals, so this squared norm, um, uh, I'll write it this way, equals the square root of the first singular value squared plus the second singular value squared and so on until we have represented, let's say we use for a matrix that has rank R, we'll just sum the squares of the singular values. And if we want to, we could, we could form a sigma vector, which is sigma 1, sigma 2, and so on, until we've represented all of the non-zero singular values of the matrix. And in that case, we could say that the, um, that the square of the Frobenius norm equals, we could say that that equals sigma transpose sigma. So there, the L2 norm of a matrix is the largest singular value, and the Frobenius norm is the square root of the sum of the squares, or the Euclidean norm of the vector of singular values.